Hi, this is Living Rural Radio, and I'd like you to um, welcome today's amazing guest. We all actually have very different attitudes towards pain, and that working with pain is one of those things that um, we all take personally. There are people in my life that will just take a painkiller. There are people that say, I never take painkillers, but do nothing about it. But I always think that pain is the body's language. It's the body's way of saying something to you about what's going on and why it's going on. So I never kind of look at pain and then think, how do I just get rid of the pain? I always look at the pain and I think, oh, what is actually at my core not working in terms of this pain? And I'm going to work out if that's the right approach or not, because my guest today is Avnita Suri, who manages, helps people to understand and deal with chronic pain. Well, actually, Avnita, you introduce yourself. Tell me what it is that you do. Uh, hi, Gita. Thanks. Thanks very much. Yes, I uh, use the body's uh, symptoms, just like you're saying, I try and get to the core. So I use the physical symptoms to find out where the trauma is, the stress and their specific um, uh, events that cause pain. So I don't uh, think that it's a case of it being uh, random. I think it's, uh, you know, like you, like you said very, uh, very well, that it's the body's way, you know, you try and figure out uh, how to communicate with it and we believe that the body is communicating with you so you, you shouldn't really shut it out yeah and so what did you what made you start on this process because invariably it's it's always a personal journey isn't it people find that there's a reason they started what was yours isn't isn't that the case all the time <laughs> yes so i had back pain uh, when i was about 24 i had it for about nine years and i did the usual things Gita. i went to you know the doctors i had an x-rays and chiropractor and osteopath and physiotherapy all these things that really weren't helping and what no, was... because you're not sick this is the thing not all pain is an illness you're right but the, it's hard to tell someone who's in pain that you're not sick so uh, you know, to you and me, that language is natural, but when we use it to other people, they won't then, uh, it won't click because they're like, no, you don't get it. I've seen the, res seen the x-rays. I've seen the evidence of me being sick, but I'll, I'll go on to explain this soon. So, yeah. uh, but, uh, so I, I read a book called um, Healing Back Pain, The Mind-Body Connection by John Sarno. Yeah. Within seven weeks, my back pain was completely gone. So it, this was quite frustrating for me because I thought, uh, well, it was amazing that I sorted it out. But also I was angry that uh, why did nobody who's a professional in pain uh, explain this to me? Because I would have been open to it, you know, many years ago. Yeah. So it's a waste of time. Uh, and then when I was trying to explain it to other people, like friends and uh, family, they were like, no, no, you don't get it. Your pain was in your head. Like I'm the nutcase. Uh, their pain is real because, like I said, they've seen evidence, but this is actually creating uh, problems. And after that, I learned to, uh, so I carry on using this sort of technique. We use affirmations and uh, focus on emotional stuff. And, yeah, uh, I was going to say, what did you learn from John uh, Sano's book? John, Jack, uh, yeah, John Sarno. He's, John Sarno, he's, actually a, a, he's actually a medical doctor himself and he was realizing a lot of people had stress in their lives and this was causing pain, even though they had diagnosed uh, back pain and uh, other even uh, chronic pain. So uh, the, the thing is, you can get affirmations there and he, ex he explains, so you focus on it being uh, emotional. It's not physical pain. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, and he explains why. So it's great coming from a doctor because then we're likely to believe him. So this is the, the part, the problem that we, you know, how we uh, revere uh, the medical industry and doctors and we put them up over there. And above. But this is, yeah, yeah. over and, and above things. Yeah, that above us. Worked. Yeah, yes. and we, we must actually listen to ourselves. If we've lost this, uh, the knack of using our intuition and using our own guidance system to heal ourselves. So, uh, so uh, you know, uh, many years later, I learned, I had another difficult period in my time. I learned, actually, I need to sort things outside. In, I need to sort things out in my head. To stop yeah. blaming things outside. And uh, That's a really big revelation. I mean, it, how did you feel when you worked that out? Because that is a really big revelation. Because so many people don't get that ever. Gita, if I told you, I was at such a low point. It was such a difficult time. I, I can't even speak about it so openly right now. Yeah. It was very personal, but I, it was one of the darkest periods of my life. And I, and there's so much shame, guilt, hurt around it that I, um, I, 
I did manage to resolve it in a slowly, slowly, the whole thing just resolved itself. And I, so from that, it was, to me, it was a miracle because from going through such a deep, dark time in my life, I managed to uh, come out and do this work. So yeah, even though I do feel that um, on the other side of fear and failure, there's success, but we have to be open to it and we have to really sit with the pain. Don't fight things on top of what you're already facing because you'll make it worse. So try and just stay there and work through all your beliefs, your emotions and work through it baby steps. And as I did that, try and sort things out in my head, uh, like I said, this problem just sort of died down until I could manage it and everything just ease off, eased off. And like I said, that I feel that's like my miracle change because now I am doing this job and helping other people to heal as well as helping myself to heal. And then just five years ago, I learned to, uh, emotional freedom technique we just help people tap on various points of the upper body i love and EFT. I, I think it's so good it's very effective you know it sounds very weird and wishy-washy well, but it's, it works. we keep a lot of emotions in our fascia don't we so the thing with the tapping is that it's the same as, as acupuncture it's the same as acupressure you're doing the same things what you're doing is finding spaces in the meridians that run energy through your system where they're actually blocked and then you apply a pressure to a blocked bit until it releases um, and it releases because the emotion is what you're holding on to. And yeah. I was saying this to my son yesterday. I said, you wake up every morning and decide if you're going to remember to be pissed off with someone. You could as easily let that go, but you decide to remember that. So if you can press on a point and release it, then EFT works very similarly, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is great. See, again, I think with that point, it's, uh, it is tough. I find it tough to let go of some things myself. So I, you know, it's, it's easy to say to someone, let go or to you know, forgive and forget. But when you're in it and you're going through it, it's like we have to allow ourselves to, ex sometimes I don't think it works to fight those feelings either, but that, but that's, or I'm talking about more of the whole of our sort of um, mentality and not so much specific pain. When it comes to pain, then we target it. This is the difference that uh, I, I feel like um, with lifestyle prescriptions, health coaching, which is what I did uh, five years ago, uh, we, we, go, we work quite accurately. So we target the actual symptoms. So there's no point in you, you know, having it out with your boss or whatever when it's not related to your pain. Your pain may be actually telling you you need some space out, some time out, or you need to address some other issue. So how That's is it that you, like when I went into lockdown, for example, I ended up with a pain in my jaw, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I used to always have a very tight jaw, but I'd never had any pain. It would be the odd like TMJ or whatever. And then I ended up with a pain in my jaw. And so I've been working on it because I found that when I was working out at home, and living with the huge stress, the intensity of lockdown, because we didn't close down, we kept working, but all my children were home and everything just became 15 times harder. Um, I clenched my jaw and that's how I managed the stress. But what would you have told me to do? Right, so if, if we were in a session, I would ask you to feel into your jaw, okay? So mm -hmm. we treat it like it's working perfectly. To me, the human body is a perfect healing mechanism. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. So although it feels hard, it feels, you know, like when we talk about cancer and heart, disease, these are difficult issues in a, in a way, but they're not also because, you know, you have to get the person to feel into it. And um, uh, I would ask you to feel into your symptoms and then we'd work out the trauma. So I'd say, okay, Gita, uh, what do you sense there? What does a the pain feel like? And you'll say, okay, it might feel like a triangle and it's red. And I'd ask you to guess the emotion and we'd work on that emotion. So if you came up with sadness and, or whatever, we would work on that. Um, uh, I wouldn't ask you to work on other emotions because that's not what your and jaw is saying. And how do you then work on the emotion? So I would, uh, so say for uh, example, it came up with sadness, then I would say, okay, when did you feel that? When did it start up? And the likeliness is that you will come up with just before you got the symptoms. So you'll say, I was in my kitchen and I had this conversation with someone and we had this, this, this going on. And then I'd ask you, okay, well, what would you have liked instead? Or how would you have expressed yourself? Or, and then we'll, we'll find it. And sometimes we have to go back in time even further. Some people, some of the thing, these things, I'm sure you know, you know, we, we start from when we're from zero to six. Yeah. Even before 
but let's not go into that. Let's just try and stick to this lifetime. Um, and so then we just work on that. And sometimes see, this is like layers. So we work on each layer, okay, layer by layer. So what you're saying is that you help, oops, uh, you help people to find out what the, isolate the emotion that causes the pain. When you've isolated the emotion that causes the pain is to identify what that, the most recent point was where that originated and then see if there's more ulterior things that came, that caused that same emotion when you were younger. Is that right? Yes. It, yes. And it depends what your body says. So, so your body might immediately, I find people who work with emotional release, uh, like in somewhere or other, they understand about, you know, they, they can work quicker. I find they're more intuitive. So we may go further. You might, if I you know, worked with you, then you might say it comes up immediately when I was two years old and I was something else, mum was having a go at me or something like that. And it might be a small event. It doesn't mean it's a huge trauma. Yeah. It might just be a small trauma. Uh, so it just depends on what your body says. If your body doesn't take you to two years old, it just took you just before lockdown or whatever. That's where we go. So this is this is it. That uh, every pain for each person is different. It's unique. Your pain in the jaw is not the per same as the next person's. Because so why give the same medicine? Uh, it doesn't really make sense to do that. To um, so you know, how long um, do you find it takes people to release pain and to, when they're working on it? All right, I find it highly effective to do it this way okay sometimes i've seen people uh, release within days like m many many years of pain uh sometimes it will take weeks and sometimes you know it takes longer months and you know, sometimes I'll, I'll be honest we will only end up managing the pain and but you will still see the drop i find you know like uh, like take for me i've got rid of most of my pain i'm at my fittest and my uh, most healthiest least pain ever but I'm not in completely, and uh, I'm not completely pain free. So I have a little bit of pain that I deal with, but my lifestyle is just up there. Like I can do all the activities I want to do yoga, uh, can lift weights, I can go jogging, can swim, everything I want to do. I, nothing really stops me, but I, I just have to deal with a bit of pain. So um, why do you think that is? Why do you think you haven't given all the pain up? I don't know. So I work on it. And, and also I'm, you know, there's no harm in trying other things now, now that I've cleared a lot of limiting beliefs and my emotions mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm aware of them, uh, then I'm open to doing other things. So, you know, then I can try a bit of yoga. I can try some uh, uh, physiotherapy if I want to, I can try some other things. The danger of going into straight away, like having, uh, let's get this clear. I do think if you have sudden pain, uh, just to uh, clear, keep, you know, keep myself clear is that uh, you should have um, like a new onset pain checked by a medical doctor. Okay. I'm just talking about chronic pain because I'm doing like uh, speaking publicly. No, and none of this is medical advice and we understand that really. And if yeah. people are, are dealing with their pain, then obviously they need to go and get some kind of yeah. medical advice and see what That's they it. need. But I'm talking about chronic pain. Okay. So I think... Uh, and so you define chronic pain as pain that you've had for a while. Yeah. For like three months or more. Yeah. Okay, so now it's now that they've said, said you've got, they might have said you've got scoliosis or herniated disc and whatever, all these diagnoses, as many, many that I work with. Uh, you, you can have one of those, but still now, I would say after, once it becomes chronic and there's nothing that, if they start saying, okay, perhaps you need surgery, this, that, the other, there is a danger of you going down the wrong path. Because yeah. what happens is if you don't look at the root, like, you know, you said something might have happened uh, before lockdown or during lockdown. That's, you know, it's upset your system and sort of um, upset the balance. So if you, if you carry, on, carry on thinking there's something wrong with your jaw and then you go on to see a dentist and doctor and this and that, the problem is you can exacerbate the pain and perpetuate it. And I, I see people who've been in 50 years of pain and never address the, the whole side, the, the, the holistic, yeah. you know, what started the pain, you know, for heaven's sake, this, if it's so easy, if it can be done so easily that, and so effectively, why would you not go here? This is the argument. Well, I think that the, I think that it's finally, you know, like doctors have, have paid attention to also to the fact that diet really matters. But I think that there is, um, what causes me the most sadness is the big divide between medicine and um, a holistic approach. And um, that divide didn't used to exist. It literally didn't used to exist because, you know, 
it was, there was always a, a, a herbal approach. There was always a midwife. There were always people that worked hand in hand. But I think that this is the advent of big pharma where it kind of took over the place of medicine. And so it stopped being about the people because that's what doctoring was always about. Doctors were about their patients and the people. And it became more about the drugs. And medicine is not always the right approach to treating someone. It just isn't. So why do we not do these things hand in hand? Why do we not say, okay, you've got this problem. Go and get, like, like now, they won't give you a, a heart transplant or, or do work on your heart unless you lose weight, right? I love that idea. That's such a clever thing because it means go and get yourself healthy before this happens. So why do we not say things like that to people who are managing pain? Go and find out, get your emotional balance, and then we'll come back and see if we need to cut you up. It should be the last resort, not the first resort. You know, we, I'm smiling because we're speaking the same language. This is yeah. one of my biggest, uh, this is one of the biggest frustrations that when I work with, and that is that, look, we're not taken seriously enough. Okay, it's like, you know, the medical industry has the upper hand and, you know, we give all our power away to them. This is, this is the problem, right? And th there's an inherent problem in diagnosis. And that is that once you diagnose someone, you actually create a limiting belief. And the thing is, the truth is that uh, you can... Uh, you can have structural and I'm going to speak more about pain because this is my speciality. Okay, so this is I'm, I just want to speak about this mainly, although it does apply to many other health issues. Okay, the thing is that you can uh, have like uh, various uh, um, diagnosis, let's say uh, herniated disc, tendonitis, frozen shoulder, uh, you name it. There's many, 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 many conditions. Um, you can have these conditions and have no pain. Okay, and vice versa. You can get pain and have nothing like that. Yeah. But what happens is once you get pain, now, like I was saying, if that pain, you're a perfect healing mechanism. And like you've said, it started from somewhere. There's a core to it. That's the truth, right? So you need to go back to where it happened. But if you have it checked, if you have it scanned, uh, like x-rays and scans and whatever, then if somebody proves it to you, yes, but you actually have arthritis. Oh, but yes, you have this condition immediately you create that label and that limiting belief okay and then it's hard for you to get out of it because you're stuck in this now and you're not only cont contending with the original emotional upset you're also contending with the diagnosis and that's yeah. tough because it comes from someone like i said we we put there at the top we put on pedestals that you know they've top but it's come from a doctor you know it's come from you know whoever this expert who's telling me i've got this condition who why why would it be anything otherwise and I, this, and I, I, I think it's very important. We worked holist, we, we work holistically. We need to bring this in as soon as people get into pain and work out where they've got but the pain. But there are some very good doctors nowadays that that actually do do this because there are there are doctors that say, that that really respond to holistic approaches to things. And we see more and more of them. We absolutely need to do this. Yes, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's just. Uh, I think I'd just like to see it happening all the time. Like after, as soon as we've excluded, you know, the tumors and the really uh, urgent things that need to be dealt with after this, we actually need to bring in, you know, the, uh, all this holistic, well, where's this pain started from? What was going on in the person's lives? Because this is never asked when I go and see a doctor or if somebody comes, uh, you know, I've, I know who's gone. It's very rare. In fact, my niece, who's a physiotherapist, she said to me, Oh, auntie, we do this now. Like we, uh, we ask people what's going yeah. on in their lives. And that made me smile, smile. I thought, yes, they're getting things right now because that's where you need to go first. Sort things out in your life. And then, like you said, there's nothing wrong with doing medicine. I'm not saying don't do it. What I'm saying is leave it to the end because by that time, 80, 90%, you're likely not to use it, need it. Do, you know, it's... Yeah, I think the less drastic the... Um... The intervention, the better it is, I honestly, because, but, but even now there are so many, I mean, like I go, and I took one of my children to the doctors and they were like, yeah, there's no point in giving you antibiotics. And I was just like, I love this person because they didn't just throw something. And it's just yeah. so fantastic how much the profession is changing. Yes. Um, because I think when most doctors are at medical school, they don't get time to eat, drink or think. And that's mm -hmm. probably why there's not space, you know, to, 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 uh, to uh, um, add all these in. And there are so many holistic things that maybe it's hard to learn more about them. But so what are the like the biggest kinds of success stories that you've had? 
Uh, okay, uh, I've had many. I've had uh, like some clients who've come to me. People work with me in various ways, either one-to-one sessions. So it's very private session and I'll get them to do, like I was just saying, feel into your symptoms. My method doesn't change according to the condition. Not really. Yeah. It can be anything. So it's actually not just pain I deal with. I've dealt with other health issues. I had somebody with a, a cyst in her breast and we uh, talked about that and the cyst went away completely. So, you know, I said, please go and get it checked with a doctor. So I'm not actually saying don't see doctors. I'm not slating them completely. Yeah. I'm trying to say how important it is to see things holistically. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and likewise, I mentioned cancer before. I'm not saying don't do things. And you said it as well. Why can't we use both things, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, look at your life too. Don't So what are that. the other success stories? So you had a lady with a cyst that you helped? Yeah, and so we talked about that, worked out the trauma, the stresses and all that, and then uh, the cyst went away completely. And uh, then I've had, uh, I've had people with pain, like someone who came to me with pain for 20 years, and uh, she had these conditions uh, uh, that were diagnosed, lots of them, sciatica, crumbling, herniated uh, and slip disc, arthritis. She had arm, hand, wrist pain, and all these things going on for 20 years. And within, when we, we, I worked with her for a few months, uh, just doing a, like about five sessions, actually. And uh, most of it just went. And she's, she, was, she said to me, I still, <laughs> I still bless you every time I pray, because they were blaming her weight and other various issues. Uh, it was, she goes, it was none of that. It was just inside. So we have to yeah. work at the things going inside. Uh, I've had people, uh, I've had someone who's worked uh, and did part of my course, my online chronic pain course, and she had scoliosis pain and she just did a a part of the course with me and she's had that pain from childhood and she goes, it was cleared 90%. And then after that, because when you understand the pain, you're not fearing it and it doesn't bother you anymore. So she didn't even complete the course with me. Um, So I've had many, many cases yeah like that uh, people with a migraine uh, uh yeah this particular case i'm thinking about uh, she had again from childhood and i actually worked on her five years ago and uh, she'd seen doctors dentists she had a bike guard um she did physical phys- physical therapy myofacial release so other stuff yeah. as well yoga carp so many 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 therapies um she worked with me for just a couple of sessions and it went completely her um migraine uh, headaches and um five years on i still heard that she's uh, clear so a lot of these people are clear they remain clear of pain a long time after because look i i love you know uh, all this uh, i think it's great to do exercise nutrition all that you know i i'm really with it but i i think we need to work with the subconscious mind as one of the first places to go because otherwise we're fighting ourselves it's like one hand on the accelerator one hand, uh, one foot on the accelerator, one foot on the brake, you know, take your foot off the brake and just go for it. That's Is there an age that you work with, with people? I mean, like what are the oldest or the youngest? N- no, any, and even babies we can work on because then we'd work on the parents because the parents are holding, we connected energetically with our children yeah. and uh, uh, no, there isn't an age. I need people to be open to what I'm saying. That's what it is. And I find people have struggled with health a lot that's when they're open uh, because it's the, but nothing's working and I'm really struggling. And, uh, and I, this is one of my gripes, gripes that I think this should be easy for people. We should immediately go, Oh yeah, what's going on in your life? How can we sort this out? This, this, and it's, it's systematic. So we should be doing this immediately. And, you know, we've missed the opportunity of helping the older generation uh, honestly if i speak to them they're like uh really no no i've got this condition how can it possibly got anything to do with, do with my emotions or beliefs but our generation and beyond we can help them so we need to open up then that's what i'd like to see like you're saying you know we shouldn't have some this such a uh, this um uh disparity between uh a medical system and the holistic we should work more hand in hand yeah how um so how do people find you where can they come to which where's your website i actually would like them to join my free facebook group uh, if they'd like to because uh, i have lots of uh, other people there and uh, holistic working practitioners so i'll have people like uh, you know who work with nutrition and then uh, toxins and uh their yoga yoga practitioners and uh uh, chiropractors so anybody who works holistically and even if you don't or you're just interested in how to get rid of pain just join my free uh, Facebook group, which is called 
Freedom from Chronic Pain with Avnita Suri. Uh, I also have a website. If you just want to see some more testimonials and uh, uh, how I work, I will update it. It's looking a bit <laughs> shabby at the moment. Um, it's avnitasuri.com. So www.avnitasuri.com. So it's A-V-N-I-T-A-S-U-R-I.com. Correct, yes. And the, the Facebook group is called Freedom from Pain. Freedom by... from Chronic Pain. Ah, Freedom did, from sorry, maybe, Chronic Yeah, maybe I didn't pain. say it correctly. Freedom from Chronic no, Pain. No, I'm sure you did. I just, it's good to repeat these things in life <laughs> because you. then you hear them. So Freedom from Chronic Pain yeah. by Avnita. With Avnita Suri. It With works, Avnita yeah, Suri. It just says the community, but if you want to check, because there'll be other groups. So if you want to check, it's the right one. Uh, you'll see my name with it, Avnita Suri. Perfect. That's really great. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And it was good to learn more about it. And I'm thinking of somebody in my family with pain. I'm like, I'm going to try and get them to call you. So that would be <laughs> amazing. You. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for spending it with us. Thank uh, you so much, Gita, for having me on. Oh, it's such a pleasure. This is Living Raw Radio. And this was the wonderful Avnita Suri. Please go ahead and have a look at, and at her website. And her Facebook group is Freedom From Chronic Pain. Finally got that right. My name is Geeta Sid Rob, And it has been a pleasure to be with you guys again. And I will see you in the next episode. Take care. <laughs>